Thank you. Mr. Satterfield, I'd like to start with you. Um, I want to start by asking you about some recent reports about Facebook. The first is from Jeffrey Fowler at the Washington Post. Now, he did a deep dive into Facebook's collection of user data, including revealing that Facebook's own financial modeling estimates that Facebook's um, uh, estimates of its user data is worth an average of $164 per user per year. Now, this would seem to confirm my own view and that of several state attorneys general, uh, including uh, my home state attorney general, Sean Reyes in Utah, that Facebook isn't actually a free service, as you suggested a moment ago, but, but rather it's one that we pay for with our data. What's concerning is that there's so little transparency in the transaction. And you've sort of confirmed that now moments ago by saying that, the, the, that it is completely free. Now, I'm never told what my data is worth. You're not even acknowledging that it is worth anything or that there's any kind of a transaction involved here. And, and what I get in return is always subject to change. You change the systems by which posts are reviewed, what's prioritized, what's deprioritized. Now, it's basic antitrust law that you look for symptoms, you look for signs. And one um, pretty consistent sign of monopoly power involves the ability to set prices and control output. Uh, what could be a better example uh, of that very thing than Facebook's ability to demand data from its users, as, as it does, without telling them its value or even acknowledging that it has a value at all, while providing a service whose quality, whose features, whose terms of service uh, and terms of use are, are subject to change at any moment, and they do frequently change at any moment. Can you answer that question for me? Thank you, Senator. Uh, you know, respectfully, I, I think we see things differently. Uh, and we, we don't see data as something that people give us in exchange for providing our services. Uh, we, we see data as something that's, that's we use to provide the service to them, to provide value to them. Okay, so you disagree with the assumption that when, you're, when there's a service out there that purports to be free, you, you, you are the product you are sort of what's being served. I mean, I, I, I get your point. Nobody's paying out of pocket with money. They're not paying in literal coins or virtual tokens to go on there. But um, you are, in fact, a for-profit business enterprise. You are, in fact, profitable. And you do that because there's something of value. So well, yes, I, I, I think we're quibbling here over sort of nonsensical distinctions between literal payment, which I didn't say, nor did I imply. Now, I guess I'd ask you to, to answer the, the question, accepting the premise that I think all the rest of us in this room and pretty much every other American would acknowledge exists, it, which is the premise that your service is, um, well, purports to be free. It is, in fact, paid for. Uh, in the sense that people contribute their, their time, they give their time, and with their time, you acquire data, you're able to monetize that. So with that understanding, I, I, I'm, I, I'm asking you that it is, a, it is a basic principle of antitrust law that um, one side of monopoly power is the ability to set prices and control output. With that premise, and what's your response to that? Uh, 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 about the fact that I'm asking what better example could one find once one accepts this premise uh, than, than that of Facebook's ability to demand data from its users without telling them the value of that data uh, and without um, uh, a service, uh, when dealing with a service whose quality and whose features and whose terms of service are subject to change at any moment, and often do. Well, Senator, again, it, 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 respectfully, that, that's just not how we think about data and all right. how we use data to provide all right. value to people. All right, I, I get it. That's not how you think about it. It's clear to me you don't want to answer that. Whatever. I it was throwing you a bone there to try to allow you to engage in a dialogue. We'll move on to the next question. Look, the Wall Street Journal 
released a series of bombshell reports last week on internal Facebook documents that revealed shocking, absolutely stunning lapses in Facebook's ability to protect Facebook's consumers, uh, for its users, from being harmed by using its platforms. This, too, looks like the behavior of a monopolist, uh, a monopolist that's so sure that its customers have nowhere else to go that it displays a reckless disregard for quality assurance, for its own brand image, and even just being honest with its users about the obvious safety risks that it's subjecting its users to, particularly its, its teenage users. In light of these reports, doesn't it look to you like Facebook lacks competition? Senator, thank you. The journal series that you're referencing raises you know, really serious and important questions, but I, I think it misses the mark in terms of what we're trying to do in the matters that it describes. How does it miss the mark? How does it miss the mark any more than, than revelations years ago about tobacco companies concealing the dangers of tobacco? How is that missing the mark any more than the revelations about tobacco and what tobacco companies knew about what they were doing to their own users? Well, Senator, I, I, I think what, what, what's being discussed in these articles are issues that we have identified ourselves and that we're attempting to work through as a company. This is research that we're doing ourselves in order to identify gaps and issues and to address them to make our platform safer. Uh, so I, I, I think these are, these are self-identified issues and these are internal deliberations that are dedicated to one thing, which is making the platform a safer place for the people who use it.